Dallas Cowboys post-game show is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Whoever lost this football game tonight in Houston was going to feel real bad about it. And the Dallas Cowboys feel real bad about it. The Cowboys lose to the Houston Texans at NRG Stadium by a score of 19 to 16 in overtime. Welcome everybody to the Dallas Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg. This was a game where both defenses made a lot of plays, really played their hearts out. Both offenses tried hard. And uh, that was about the only good thing you could say about them. Uh, on the evening long basis, but Houston made more plays than the Cowboys did on offense. That was the difference. They did. They had a lot more yards. They had a lot more first downs. They had a lot more to everything offensively. Where the Cowboys defense really rose up was down at the goal line. They held them to a 19, a 20, and a 21-yard field goal because this game could have been a runaway if not for that because clearly Houston's offense outplayed the Dallas offense. Yep, so both teams are now 2-3. and three. And they feel completely different about it. Let's hear some of the post-game thoughts of Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett. Yeah, obviously it was the big play of the game. And, uh, you know, the quarterback is so dynamic. He does such a great job extending plays. And then Hopkins is a big-time player. And, uh, you know, give, give those guys credit uh, for making that throw and catch and then, uh, and then for the run after the catch uh, to put them in field goal position. Yeah, it was a it was a long uh, one. You know, we we had a we had a third and two, and we didn't make much on it, and uh, we just felt like at that point in the game, the way our defense was playing, uh, the idea was to pin him down there. Uh, Chris did a great job with the punt. They got the ball on the ten yard line, and hopefully, you make a stop and you win the game. Coming back the other way uh, with a game winning field goal. Yeah, they did a good job. They loaded up in there, and they did a good job up front. Uh, we weren't consistent running the football uh, inside, uh, really throughout the game. Uh, I thought our guys battled. I thought they fought. I thought Zeke ran hard a couple times. He almost came out of there, but uh, not as consistent as we wanted to be. Yeah, obviously not not efficient enough in the passing game uh, tonight. Uh, a lot, lot of different parts to that. They did a good job rushing the quarterback. Uh, there were guys around Dak a, a lot in this ball game. Uh, I thought at times made a number of really good plays in the game to keep drives alive or big plays to give us scoring opportunities. But again, we're start striving for more consistency, more efficiency, and more explosiveness in our passing game. Yeah, we were trying to get to the 40-yard line, ideally. Uh, I think we got it on the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, I think we got it on the 47, so we're trying to get 12 or 13 yards to give them a chance to kick the last one. You know, there is, there's explaining what happened in the game, which is what the head coach has to do right after the game, and, uh, and then there's trying to figure out a way to fix it, and for the Cowboys, five games into a 16-game season, uh, there are now some offensive trends that they've got to find a way to correct. Yeah, and the one thing they didn't get going tonight was the running game. And I think if there's anything, obviously, that they can hang their hat on, it's that run game. But Houston did a very good job at bottling up Zeke Elliott today. You knew they were going to be a handful in the pass rush. Uh, I think their run defense is a little underestimated because, obviously, you, you, you get mesmerized by Clowney and Watt on the ends and how we're going to keep them out from hitting our quarterback. But uh, they did a great job in the run. And once they took away the run from the Cowboys, I think it was a little bit over from there. 1916 Houston, the final in overtime. We'll have more from NRG Stadium when the Cowboys postgame show continues. Welcome back to Houston. It's the Cowboys postgame show. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg, 1916 in overtime. The Texans win tonight. And as we said during the broadcast, if the Cowboys had won this game, somebody had to nominate Tyrone Crawford for Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, you were in the backfield all night long. You were as disruptive as you could possibly be. And uh, we're watching the faces of guys, including you, coming out of the locker room. Uh, they're, they're, it doesn't look like a birthday party. How do you handle the emotions of playing as hard as you did, emptying your buckets the way you did as a unit, and coming out with a result like this? I mean, you know, um, you guys know me. I, I, I just I try and play my like my heart out every single game. So 
Um, you know, no, no matter the result, I'm, I'm going to feel, you know, different. If we win, I'm obviously going to feel happy. Um, but any loss, you know, I forget about everything that I did. And, you know, it's a loss. It's, it doesn't mean anything. So, um, you know, I, it's unfortunate we got the loss. Um, you know, we, 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 we uh, did some things on defense that, um, you know, we could have did a lot better. And, uh, you know, we need to get more turnovers. I mean, we got two today, but uh, we, need to, we need to get some early turnovers and maybe, you know, score on defense. And, you know, that's something that uh, we definitely got to harp on this week and, you know, get rolling. I know you don't want to talk about yourself, and we do want to talk about this game, but I do want to get back to Brad's point. You're at a point, you appear to be playing your best football. Is there a reason for that? No, I don't know, man. I, I mean, is something clicked? Is something what they're doing with you defensively? I don't feel like I'm playing my best football. You don't? Um, no, I mean, like, uh, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm doing the job, uh, and I'm, and, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do it as well as, uh, you know, I ever have. But, um, you know, I, just, I don't, I don't, I don't know, you know, my best football I, until like, you know, I'm rocking quarterbacks left and right, and you know, uh, feeling like I felt, you know, in, in college, which uh, I feel is coming up, man. But, um, you know, I need. We need to make big plays. Um, not only me, everybody on the D line. Um, we need to get this thing rolling, and you know uh, we're going to have a long talk about it this week, and we're definitely going to start going. All right, this quarterback's a little tough to play. Would you talk a little bit about what the plan was uh, going in for him, and how, without watching the tape, gut feeling a, as a group, how do you think you did with that? Uh, you know, again, that's one thing that um, you know I didn't think. Uh, uh, we did well. Um, we, we, we talked about it all week, and uh, we need to keep him in the pocket. And we knew that he makes big plays outside the pocket. Um, tonight, he, he made a couple good plays inside the pocket, but uh, you know those we uh, we were you know we were willing to give up as long as we you know try to collapse the pocket. But um, we let him get outside of the pocket, and he made some big plays that we couldn't let happen. And uh, we talked about it all week, and I'm, I'm upset about it, man. I'm upset about it that uh, we let it happen. And, I mean, we can't do that. But we also, you know, we can't we can't change our game for any quarterback. So, uh, again, man, we got some things to talk about this week, but uh, we'll get it right. My guess is that he's a pretty sore young man tonight. Would you not agree? I mean, you guys tattooed him any number of times back there, both inside the pocket and out. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean that's what we're trying to do, man. Like, we're trying to hit the quarterback, you know, as many times as we can. We're trying to disrupt him. And we knew, like, if we can, uh, you know, get to that guy, um, you know, the, the – they wouldn't make as many plays, you know, and they, they definitely, uh, it, w it would be a slower game. And, you know, he um, he did his thing, man. He got out of the pocket and he was um, he was reading us well. And, um, I know you, again, we can't let that happen. Excuse me, I know your job is not to look down the line and it's to get ready for Jacksonville. But mm -hmm. Tennessee started last year two and three. They end up making the playoffs. So do you have to kind of adjust yourself to the fact that, hey, well, it's, you don't feel very good about things right now. They can obviously change. Oh, I in a feel hurry. great about things right now. I just feel like uh, we just need to, uh, we just need to tweak a couple things, man. Is it? I think we're getting better and better every week. Um, there's just little things that happen. That's all on us. It's not what they do to us. It's what we do to us. And as long as we start getting those things right and uh, we talk to the right people about it, we're gonna get it, man. It's just, it's just right now. Um, you know, we're letting some things happen, and again, it's it's because of us. It's not because of what they're doing to us. So, uh, as soon as we clean that up, man, it's going to start rolling. And when you say there, are, as you're a captain, well, you're one of the leaders. When you say there are things we're going to talk about this week, like what? There's a lot we're going to talk about this week. Um, me personally, you know, um, I'm going to have, uh, you know, my turnover talk, my fourth quarter talk, um, and you know, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to be me and be real with my guys. And, uh, you know, just talk about what, how I feel uh, this defense needs to we, We've had a lot of mistakes, and um, we can't have that. And uh, we're going to clean that up. It's not, it's not going to happen. But, but if I went back and said ahead of this game, you're going to play four quarters and you gave up 16 points, wouldn't you say, yeah, I'll take that? No. <laughs> no. 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 They shouldn't have got downfield that far, and they shouldn't have got as many field goals. Um, but... Again, you know, uh, that is it's a good game for the defense, you know, but it's not as good as, as good as we hold ourselves to. And, you know, I feel like we can do a lot better and we can we can help this offense out by getting, you know, more turnovers. We're, we're a dominant defense. And I feel like, um, you know, I feel like for us, we could be the best defense in the league. We just got to we just got to roll with it and we got to believe it and we got to we just got to go. Your passion shows. We appreciate yes, the time. Appreciate Thank you, Tyrone. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Cowboys postgame show continues in a moment. Back 
to NRG Stadium in Houston. It's the Cowboys postgame show. 19-16 in overtime. The Texans, the final score tonight. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg were joined by Cowboys wide receiver Alan Hearns. Another difficult night for the offense tonight, but I'm going to start on the positive note. You got your first Cowboys touchdown, and at that point, it, did it feel like maybe some things were going to start to click? Um, yeah, I felt like it was, you know, um, main thing for us, you know, we'll, we got down in the red zone a lot today, you know, but um, we didn't capitalize a lot of times, you know, if you want to be a good team in the NFL, you know, once you get down there, you got to score points, you know, especially with the caliber of offenses that we have in the NFL now, you know, um, field goal is not going to be enough. You had a fourth and two in the overtime period there. Were you at about the 43 yard line of Houston? Were you hoping you would go for it at that point? Or what was your thought process? Um, yeah, you know, I, I thought we'd go for it, you know, but that's not my decision. You know, um, you know, you gotta trust that the coach know what he's doing, you know. But um, if it's up to me, yeah, I go for every fourth and two. Yeah, sure. Hey, have you settled in as a cowboy yet? I mean, I know you, you come in, new city, you're trying to living arrangements, all that. Five weeks in, do you feel like you're a Dallas Cowboy now? Um, yeah, I feel like I am. You know, off the field, I, I feel like I am. On the field, you know, I feel like I haven't done anything yet. You know. Um, you no, know, but it's just having that faith that it's going to come. You know, um, you know, of course, you know, statistically, you know, things not going or win wise, you know, we, we're not getting things rolling how it's supposed to be, you know, but it's about um, coming out each and every week, you know, having that faith that things are going to turn around. And for some, it's hard to put a loss like this behind you. For you, I'm going to guess it's going to be a little easier than for most because you get to play the team this week that you used to play for in Jacksonville. Would that be correct? You circle this one when the schedule came out? Um, yeah, no doubt. You know, um, it's just like you playing against your your older or little brother. You know, it, it's one that you don't want to lose. You know, especially coming from over there. You know, but um, of course we all know that every game is important in, in the NFL. You know, but it's just something about going against your old team. The other side of that coin is, I think I know you well enough now to know that there's an intensity burning in there that's not happy when things aren't going well for the unit. Sure, and sure. Um, you know, it, you, this is the. NFL, you can't just stop and get all new guys. You guys have to figure it out. Can you share any thoughts about what things besides just going back to work and working hard? You have any thoughts about what can what can happen to make the offense click a little better? Um, yeah, you know, it starts with us. You know, um, today we left a lot of plays out there. You know, in the receiver position. You know, uh, there are some plays that we should have had. You know, uh, even with me, you know, I missed a couple of signals. You know. Um, you know, but it, it starts with, you know, just getting opportunities, you know, um, when it come our way, we know we rotate a lot, you know, you, you never know how many uh, catches or targets you're going to get a game, you know, but when they do come, you just got to make the most of them, you know, so for sure we all know, you know, it's frustrating, it's frustrating, you know, but um, you just got to stay in it, you know, and control what you can. And Alan, this is not baseball, we get 162 of these things, the, the NFL season comes and goes pretty quickly, so uh, five games in, now coming up against Jacksonville, you kind of at a tipping point of what we're going to be here as a team? Um, yeah, for sure. You know, um, I feel like it's, it's a bit tough. You know, we didn't get any momentum. You know, uh, we lose the game, win the game, lose the game, win the game. You know, uh, we got to find a way, you know, to win co consecutively and also, you know, win on the road. You know, we haven't done that yet. You know, um, but uh, time is winding down, like you said. You know, we don't have a lot of games. You know, uh, so we got to get to a point. You know, where we're playing good ball and then uh, translate over. You know, from week in and week out. All right, Alan, we appreciate the time and congratulations on that first touchdown. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Did you, get the, Alan Hearns. Did you get the ball, by the way? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, good. That's Thank one you. thing. Anyway, Cowboys postgame <laughs> show continues in a moment. Welcome back to Houston. The Cowboys postgame show continues. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg, Houston 19, Dallas 16 in overtime tonight. When the Cowboys needed a big play, Jordan Lewis made one today with a big fumble recovery. And, and I want to I want to find out from you how hard it has been to stay in the game mentally and be alert enough to make a play like that when you have not been given the opportunity of any more snaps than you have. Uh, it, ha it hasn't been, you know, because I have great brothers, you know, that keep me up and they believe in me uh, and they understand when, when I get the opportunity, I can, you know, I can deliver. And um, it's just, you know, that, that defense is a, is a family. So uh, just having those guys supporting me is, is definitely a, a, a advantage that, you know, I can just come in and just have that confidence that I can go out there and play. And walk us through that play, if you will. One minute you're probably coming over to make the tackle, and all of a sudden, ball's on the ground. And what goes through your mind at that point? Uh, just scoop it. You know, just get the ball. Um, that's that's a game right there for us. Um, just just make sure that we come up with it, and uh, make sure that you know we get our offense uh, a chance to go and score. But you know, once I saw nobody was around me, you know, I just got up and you know tried to go you know score. 
Now, Talk. When's the last time you played offense? Uh, high school? <laughs> yeah, high school, senior year. Yeah, and so were you thinking like an offensive player then? <laughs> no, I the wasn't. I was thinking, you know, just get on the ball. Honestly, just get the ball for the offense, our team, you know, just be smart. So. You guys still talk city country in terms of ball. Oh, yeah, definitely. So explain so, that to our audience, So city, will. A city fumble is when you have everybody around you. So you just go down there and you scoop it up and you just, you know, just lay on it. But a country fumble is one of those things that you can, you know, you can try to corral and, and go advance. But So I thought it was a city fumble. I saw it wasn't, and I uh, just tried to go to advancing. Can you talk a little bit? Tyrone Crawford just uh, talked with some real passion about his frustration, and I know all of you share it about uh, getting the difficulty in getting takeaways, and that was such a big play because it kind of broke the bubble a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, wh what do you guys talk about, and how do you work on that? Uh, Coach Richard always talks about, you know, getting the ball, and, and when we do right, you know, do right longer, it, you know, it comes. And we, we did right, and, and when they come, they come in bunches. Um, and and we, just, we just understand if we do right, continue to do right, those, you know, those games, you know, those, those takeaways will come our way. I know when you're playing, you don't get the appreciate. you don't have an appreciation for other players because you're locked into what you have to do. But was there any appreciation for the way that Deshaun Watson is able to avoid traffic, make big plays, throw on the run on all that? He, he made it. He, he had a great game, honestly. Uh, we, we, did our, we, we did our best to try to corral him and um, keep him in the pocket. And he made some great plays out there. And, um, you know, he's a great player. Uh, we just got to watch our film, clean it up, and hopefully we get another shot at him. It's still early in the year, and yet there's no time to let slip away. Mm -hmm. uh, how much more urgency do you guys feel, do you think, about getting the ship righted before the playoffs just um, kind of slip away? It's always urgent. It's always urgency. Every time we step on the field, every time we prepare to play somebody, it's always urgency. It's always urgency to get to the ball, always urgency, you know, to to, to play defense and, you know, play offense the way we we, we usually do. So we just got to get back in the, in, the, in the film room and see how, you know, things we can clean up and, and look forward to next week. And, and what was Jason Garrett's message to the team at the end there when you came uh, back? Just keep fighting. You know, we, we fought fought our tails off the game. You know, it just wasn't it wasn't enough for us to, 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 to pull out the win. So next time we'll, we'll definitely clean those things up and, and get it going. Jordan, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on that fumble recovery. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. There's Jordan appreciate Lewis. Cowboys postgame show continues in a moment. Welcome back to Houston. Brad Sham and Babe Laufenberg on the Cowboys postgame show. Tough loss for the Cowboys tonight, 19-16 to in overtime to the Houston Texans, and it does not get easier coming home next week uh, because Jacksonville at 3-2 and two is a team with, some people think, the best defense in the NFL. Doesn't seem to be the team you would pick for the Cowboys to play <laughs> with their offensive struggles right now, but you never know. It's a funny league. Well, I was thinking coming into this game, Brad, if you could get into the 20s somewhere, probably had a pretty good chance to win this game. Uh, next week against Jacksonville, with the way the two offenses are playing, both of Dallas and Jacksonville, the way the two defenses are playing, somebody in the teens can win that ball game. You, know, you get to 14, 17, probably have a pretty good chance to win it. And, and uh, what do you think? You've been in, in offensive huddles, meeting rooms. You know, what, when your offense is struggling, what do you do during the week? Well, no one likes to hear it, but th there's no white horse coming to the rescue here. And uh, as I often say, that's why they put coach in front of these guys' names. So it's their job to figure out a way to get it turned around. That's Babe's way of saying I'm glad it's their problem and not mine. 325 next Sunday afternoon Central Time. It's the Cowboys and the Jaguars at AT&T Stadium. And Babe and I will join you then on our next Dallas Cowboys postgame show. The Dallas Cowboys postgame show was brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Want to tour AT&T Stadium? For more information, call 817-892-TOUR.